Hey there, Sartre here. We're back uh, with the Depths of Chaos. You know, I'm really, uh, really spreading this out as much as I can because uh, Gooby's not giving us anything else to do. So, uh, you know, just took a few days off just logging in, you know, doing daily, daily stuff. <clears throat> uh, had a nice weekend. Hope you did as well. Uh, but I figured I, I'd come back and do the gathering team clears. So the two battles that have the gathering team mission category are Dark Medusa uh, and Dark Galcarina. Um, you saw me do Dark Galcarina with my Royal Arms party already. This is the plant boss. Um, so I'll do the gathering team with that one. Uh, and then Dark Medusa is the other one. This is the demon. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to... Um, Take on Dark Medusa and Dark Gal Karina, and hopefully get this done. Show you how I got this done with the Gathering category. And then after that, the only one I've got left is Blessing of the Crystals. Um, might do that today, might do it later this week. Like I said, I'm just trying to spread things out a bit. Um, get myself a reason to come back and play the game. Because <laughs> Gooby's not giving us much. So here we go. Let's get in here. Let's start with Medusa. Um, I think Medusa is probably the more difficult of the two. So I'll start with that one. As usual, I'm not taking any friends. So if you're not getting the results you see here, just bring a friend unit. You know? Um, friend units are, that's what they're, they're there for. Uh, if, if you can't get it done, friends are there to help you and carry you along the way. Uh, so I have an EX2 lock, so, you know, obviously I'm using him for my gathering party. You may not have a lock. If you don't have a lock, I, I can't really help you. I don't, I don't, I don't have any other really good gathering, uh, category damage dealers. As you can see, like, you know, I, I've got King of Bal, um, Galif, and then I've got like an EX1, uh, uh, Sabin over here. Um, so, I, my gathering units are pretty, pretty crap. Um, so, th this is the best I can put forward, and this is just how I got it done. So, hopefully, if you have these units, you can follow along. Um, I'm not going to do any gear swaps between the two fights. Um, I will change one unit, however, and that is, um, Fiend of the Return. So, she's in this fight for her Demon Killer. And then for her, you know, obviously for her full buff and her LB damage buff, <clears throat> that's really all she's doing. We're not using, you know, any kind of light element or anything like that. Purely here for the demon killer buff and, um, and, and for the, for the full buff. Um, everyone else is going to say the same. Um, when we do the plant boss, I'll switch her, I'll, I'll put Roka in her place because Roka has plant killer in her kit and that's, and that's pretty much it. All right. Um... I'll go ahead and show you the gear real quick because nothing's going to change between the two fights. So this is my, uh, my pretty much my standard bearer build for lock. A um, couple of pieces of clash gear there. Um, not not at all necessary, but you know, just gives them a nice EP and stat. Crystal orb. It was like a, an event uh, piece of equipment for him. It's really nice because it gives him 500 flat um, attack. So you know, it, it's definitely worth it to have to get that one if you have it. His STMR in one hand, Dark Rising Sun in the other, because he does a 45% um, throwing weapon in peril. As well as dagger in peril. I mean, it's 45% it's dagger and throwing weapon, so just so you know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, just filling out his killers. So he's got Ifrit equipped, so that takes care of the plant. Uh, and then Indomitable Warrior. Uh, that's of course Frosty's STMR, which does the 100% demon killer. So he's capped on demon and on plant. Good to go. Full LB damage. He's ready to rock and roll. A little bit of chain speed, which is always nice, but not, you know, not super necessary. Someone asked in a previous video about this materia. Um, no, sorry, not that one. Wrong one. Um, it was the other one. The, um, the one that also comes with chain speed boost. I probably should put that on lock, actually. Um... In fact, I will. It's that other one. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Cannot remember the name of it right now. Hopefully, I can track it down real quick for you guys um, without doing too much. Ancient Dual Blade Arts. Yeah, this was the one. Someone was asking me about this one. Um, and it's nice because it comes with Chain Speed Boost on it. Only 100%, but it's nice. Plus, of course, TDW uh, 100% for attack and mag. 
And this is the material that you get from the third level of the sealed tower. So hopefully you've done that and you picked that up from the treasure chest. Um, that's where that comes from. And that's useful for TDW units like lock, or uh, I think it was on my NV plus T if somebody saw it and asked a question about it. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, prodigious performer, another chain speed boost materia that comes from Olivera. Um, I, this is just the best vision card I have for him. Obviously, if you don't have this vision card, put the best one that you have on him. If your lock is only EX1, uh, you probably won't be able to follow this guy. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, I mean, I, I suppose you, I suppose you still could try. Um, you know, using him as a leader. If you can find a friend lock that's EX2 that can basically do what my lock does here. Um, but I, I think your lock needs to be at least EX2. If your lock is EX3, you could potentially finish this fight even sooner. I'm doing a fin t four turn finish, obviously, because he's EX2. So his SLB uh, activates on turn four. So it, by necessity is a uh, turn four finish uh, for both of these fights. So just putting that out there. All right, things can change depending on your EX level. Um, <clears throat> Ash is the tank, so she'll be tanking the fight for us, so this is just kind of like a, a pretty basic build. Um, nothing too fancy on here, pretty budget gear, um, you know, nice spread of, of bulk and some elemental resists, I think. I honestly didn't even pay attention to the elemental resists. Power cut uh, for a basic bulk card. Um, pretty much the same gear in her uh, Brave Shift form. Nothing too fancy going on here. She's really here just to tank, and um, that's pretty much it. Uh, Fina. Again, just sort of basic build. She's got some resists. She's got some, uh, oh, I meant to give her, um, where is a hairpin of purity for ailment resists. We definitely want to make sure people have some ailment resists on there. <clears throat> um, oh, sorry. The rest of the gear, it's just, it's just bulk gear. Just some bulk stuff here. Um, Gallif in his normal form, just make sure you've got some form of preemptive LB boost. And for example, uh, I'm using Titus's guard for preemptive LB boost because he can benefit from that. Um, the rest of the gear is pretty irrelevant, uh, except for Isle of Chocobos, which is there for the ailment resists. Because uh, the, these bosses do throw ailments at you. Um, like Medusa will reduce your resistance to stone uh, to petrify and then petrify your party. So you need to have petrify resistance and someone who can do re uh, ailment resistance buff to make sure that nobody gets gets petrified um so that's pretty important so everybody needs ailment resist and then the plant does the same thing the plant boss reduces your ailments i think it only inflicts like blind and poison though so it's not quite as bad as medusa but medusa has the potential to like basically end the fight uh if if everybody gets petrified all right, um, in his Brave Shift form, a little bit more damage. Magister's Ring for Chain Cap boost. Um, he hits the killers on this one really easy for, for Demon and, um, and Plant, which is really nice. So you don't have to worry about the killers really uh, much at all. Um, and then Ibarra's Vision card, uh, it does have Chain Cap boost. So he has two forms of Chain Cap. So, you know, he doesn't really need Ibarra's card. You could put something else on there if you have it. Um, you know, you could put, like... Uh, Flaring Ether Reigns card on him, um, so, you know, because it has a little bit more static attack, but that's just, that's just what's on him. Um, but yeah, he is maxed out on everything as well, Demon and Plant and LB damage. He's ready to rock and roll. Good deal. Um, Sabin, I didn't really, honestly, I didn't really bother too much with, uh, with Sabin. Um, he's really just here to do some chaining, um, but yeah, this is the build that I built for him. Uh, three stars because he kept running out of MP because his MP is like stupidly low. Um, preemptive LB boost because he can benefit from that. I love Chocobos for the ailment resist. Uh, and yeah, just this vision card for something. All right. So this is the team. Um, like I said, if you need more damage, bring a friend and uh, let's get her done. So the rotation is going to look pretty similar between these two, um, you know, with, with a, a few minor differences. Obviously, you know, Fina won't have the same rotation as, um, exact same rotation as, as Roka will in the, in the next fight. All right, um, Fina is going to uh, do Delightful Glow for the Demon Killer. Uh, she can do... Uh, she can just do, like, a Protectica and... Barrier. Why not? 
Um, Ash is going to do her cover, provoke, and Shelga. Um, Sabin will do smash it with blitz and double true raging. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, Locke is going to end Faraga to imbue everybody and then double Sonic Rampage. And Galath is just going to do his uh, Dawn Tactics for the Imperial Fields, Venerable uh, Knight's Majesty for the Imperials, and Bal Art's Fire. Now, since this is a turn four clear, our Imperial Fields are going to get overwritten on the burst turn on turn four. If your lock is EX3, then then you'll still have your Imperial Fields on turn three for the burst turn. So, you know, this is, you know, just to say I know that uh, the Imperial Fields are going to get overwritten. If you're doing a turn five clear, however, you could wait and save your Imperial, Imperial Field for turn four and then do a burst on turn five. Just some options there. All right, um, yeah, I'm gonna send these two. Okay, a little chip damage. Okay, um, so Fina will just do her LB because we're gonna do another little bit of chip damage here. Um, Galaf will just do triple gleaming dawn. Sama does triple true raging fist. Um, Ash is going to brave shift. All right, she is going to do uh, veil. I don't think there's anything else she needs to do here, does she? Yeah, no, there's nothing else she needs to do because um, we haven't really taken much yeah, we haven't taken like any damage. She's just gonna do Veil. That's that will take care of our petrify resistance. Okay, Fina does her LB for the buffs. And I'm just gonna do a little chip damage here. Alright, nothing big. Just a little chip damage. Alright, so I'm gonna tap lock. So his normal LB is is really weird. It's like five hits. Um and so I'm gonna tap him and then immediately tap Galif and and save him. And it should all fall in the chain. Okay. Now, you may not need to do that. If your units are as strong as mine, you're probably going to kill on turn four anyways, even if you were doing it from 100%. But in case your units aren't quite as strong, I'm showing you how to do a little bit of chip damage before your burst. All right. Scion's going to, uh, or sorry, Ash is going to come back. Um, she can just kind of re-up her covers and all that, all that jazz. Um, yeah, just kind of do all that over again. Locke is going to... Uh, Elemental Burst Fire, Phil LB, and Rachel's Last Words. Alright, Gallop is going to shift. Um, he's going to do Elemental Burst Fire, Phil LB, and Championing Hope. Sabin will do Elemental Burst Fire, Phil LB, and True Raging Spirit. And Fina can honestly on this turn just do whatever. Doesn't really need to do anything, I don't think. Should do barrier, just re-up our barriers, I guess. Okay, so there's the, yep, yeah, so she replaced our fields, that's fine. Uh, it's not gonna make a difference. We're gonna kill this thing anyways. Uh, Fina does her SLB. Okay, we're gonna triple bolting strike. Here, Sabin does his S, uh, his S, sorry, just his regular LB, because mine's on the EX2. Obviously, if yours is EX, sorry, mine's on the EX1. If yours was EX2, your, your saving could do his SLB, which would be great, uh, but mine's not. So I'm just going to use them basically as chain slaves to ramp up the chain, and then send a, a Galath and Lock. All right, and that should be the end of this boss. If not, we'll finish, we'll clean up on turn five. Easy peasy, and we should we should do enough damage right there to to have killed the boss from 100%. Yeah, six bill. Yeah, easy. I think the boss only has five five billion, so a um, bit of overkill there. But like I said, I showed you how to do a bit of chip damage if you're not quite crossing the finish line on turn four. 
All right, and even if you don't finish uh, on, on turn four, even with the chip damage, the boss doesn't do anything like extraordinary on turn four to, to wipe your party. So you can just like, you can honestly probably just do some chaining to, to clean up what's left. Um, obviously Locke doing the majority of the damage there. So like I said, if you don't have Locke, uh, I can't help you. <laughs> Move along, find somebody else. All right, so there's Gathering against Medusa. <clears throat> uh, Gal Karina is a plant. So let's get in here. Again, no friends. Um, and we're going to pop Roka in her place because Roka uh, also is a buffer uh, and does plant killer, which is very, very useful. Okay, so pretty much the same. I'll, I'll just show you the gear on Roka real quick. It's, it's all just kind of bulk gear. Like I literally hit optimize and put HP, but then I just had to switch the hat over to hairpin of purity for the ailment resist. So she's full ailment resist. Okay, so let's get in here and see how we clean this one up. All right, it's gonna look very similar to the previous clear. Just cover, provoke, Shelga. Roka will do uh, her spell of plant and stone. Uh, haste and then quick on herself that way she can potentially cast the plant killer again on turn four all right um yeah same thing we'll do smash it with blitz double true rage lock does uh in fireaga and double sonic rampage galif does his breaks and imperil fields and then ballarts fire to give himself an imbue and an amp all right Okay, so this boss does a bit more physical damage, but that's okay. Um, we we will be just fine. All right, Ash is going to shift. All right, she's going to do triple. We'll do a veil for the uh, ailment resist, Protectica for the physical mitigation, and Kiraga just to heal us up from that last hit. Roka is going to do her LB for the buffs, and we're going to do some chip damage again. Um, I meant to, on last turn, actually use Gallop's uh, LB. Um, you don't have to. Uh, as you could see, I was able to finish the fight without it, but um, if your Gallop is EX2, then you can do his LB here, and that's perfectly fine because it's triple bolting strike. All right, so just like before, lock, and then the other two, and everything should fall in the chain. There you go, little chip damage. Um, now, since we pushed the 80% threshold, the boss will heal itself on this turn. Um, so maybe you don't want... To, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, the boss is going to fold the spell to party, no matter what. So that's not like a threshold uh, move. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll dispel, and then it's going to... Uh, because we pushed 80%, it does an extra uh, imperil on us, and then does a 10% heal. Okay, so just like last time... We'll do Elemental Burst, fill LB, Rachel's Last Words for the Mod Boost, uh, Galif, Elemental Burst, Fire, fill LB, and Championing Hope for the Mod Boost, uh, Sabin, Elemental Burst, Fire, fill LB, and Raging Fist, um, Ash can come back. Alright, uh, we've been dispelled, so we got to re-up our cover, Provoke, and Shelga. And then, um, yeah, we're just going to do quick on herself again. That's really all we need to do here. Just quick on herself again. Well, actually, what we could do, here, let's do this. All right, we'll do uh, quick on herself, haste, and then we'll do slow to reduce the boss's accuracy a little bit. Just, you know, keeps physical damage down to a minimum. All right. Um, so yeah, it does something there that kills Ash. I honestly don't know what it is, but I honestly don't care. <laughs> um, Roka is going to do her, uh, her SLB for the buffs. Um, and honestly, um, Sabin's kind of useless here. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, because he doesn't do Mirror of Equity Chains. Um, and since Ash dies, if I if... if if I spent the time to figure out what it was that was killing her, um, 
then she could chain with Soblin like you saw in the previous fight. But the plant boss is much squishier than the demon, so it honestly doesn't matter. Like these two together are gonna are gonna totally destroy this boss. So uh, I'm just gonna send Galif and Locke and end the fight right here. And Soblin could just watch. And there you go. And there you go, 5.6. Again, I think the boss has like 5 billion, so we're doing some overkill there. Um, and there it is. I think it might be a physical attack that's killing her, so maybe if she had some, uh, some evasion, I'm not really sure. I honestly don't know. <clears throat> um, again, Locke carrying the fight hard. Okay, so um, if you don't have Locke, sorry. I, I can't help you. Uh, but that's how I got my gathering team clears done. Um, hopefully this helps you. Uh, like I said, Blessing of the Crystal is the last one I have to do. So that's against Spicodurus and Medusa again. Um, so I'll be working on those, uh, you know, can't promise I'll get it out to you later today, maybe tomorrow or the day after. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not I'm not really sweating it, I'm not trying to get things done as quickly as possible because uh, there's just not a whole lot to do. Um, unless like Clash of Wills comes out this week, you know, I think it's gonna be another dead week. So uh, not a whole lot to look forward to. But anyways, again, thank you for following me and I will see you on the other side.